Okay, so thank you, Peter, for that introduction on resumes. You brought up some really fantastic points as uh, in regards to like keywords, professional emails, and things like that. So I'm gonna start you off with a video just to get you a little bit of inspiration for what LinkedIn can do for you. This was um, a commercial that was released right when they rebranded their tagline. So their newest tagline is, you're closer than you think. So. So I'm going to dive deep into what seems to be somewhat of an, of an abstract concept these days, social media. But to us millennials, we're well aware of the impact that social media can have, not just on your professional presence, but on your personal as well. So for me, this commercial spoke to me, uh, not just because I love any and all things space, because it brought up some valuable points um, on where your profile can take you. And these five words at the end, you're closer than you think. That's a powerful statement, is it not? How many, how many of you find yourself getting caught up in your day-to-day -day struggles of your education or industry career and forget that the world is full of other opportunities that you're blind to? What I mean by that is just like the commercial said, three million members on LinkedIn were qualified to be an astronaut and the latest astronaut candidate um, opening in 2016. Yet only a little over 18,000 applied. Now this is partly due to qualification knowledge. So what sets LinkedIn apart from any other site is its ability to connect industry professionals all around the world and give them the opportunity to discover some of those possibilities, like finding that dream job of going to space. So today I'm going to be discussing how you can use your social media to your advantage, what your online presence says about you, how to develop your online presence, LinkedIn tips along with etiquette, and then some opportunities that I have been given based on my social media presence as a whole. <clears throat> so in today's technical society, a simple click of a button can go a long way. And it has become the major way employers uh, get to know you both professionally and personally. For this reason, developing your online professional presence should be of great importance through both social and professional platforms. This is inclusive of Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Google Plus, and many others. By creating and maintaining professional profiles throughout all of your platforms, you can connect with potential employers, highlight skills and experiences, and even build a professional brand that makes you stand out from the pool of highly qualified applicants. <clears throat> so a strong online presence can make it easy for employers to have additional avenues to search and assess you as a potential candidate. So let's keep in mind, your LinkedIn is there in addition to your resume to show who you are as an individual off paper. So it's an additional avenue. A few things to ask yourself are, do you have a professional headshot? Do you use industry keywords and phrases related to your desired position? And does, do you tell your story in your bio, inclusive of education, experience, technical projects, etc.? So remember to ask yourself, if an employer Googles your name, what will they see? It's pretty important to think about. What comes up? <clears throat> Unsavory photos, negative tweets, or what if you have a common name? How do you get yourself to stand out from the crowd? <clears throat> Be, keep in mind that if the negative attention presented by your online presence is too much, it's best to just delete your account. If you're not happy with, appear, with what appears on your Google search, then it's time to change it. 
It's also important to keep to keep in mind what you post about political and religious top religious topics, even if it is on your own personal Facebook. There have been many instances in this modern day of age where people have been fired based on these topics. And you can Google them. I don't have examples, but there have been plenty. <laughs> okay, so try to customize a personal brand that reflects your career goals and start networking with professionals in your field. This is what has brought me so much success. I've branded myself um, as Astronaut Jill, and you'll see that later on. Um, but that's really given me a connection to the space industry as a whole and has given people the ability to find me. And that is key. <clears throat> so back to that common name. A best way to combat yourself is uh, to combat that is to brand yourself under variation of your name. So using a middle name or whatnot. And remember that cons consistency is key. So the way you present your name, uh, the rebranding of it all should be on your resume, your business cards, your Facebook, your Twitter, everything. And that goes into uh, leveraging your social media. So try to customize your personal brand. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> so make sure to develop a cohesive presence by connecting all of your digital profiles that potential employers may see. So what comes up when you do a Google search on yourself? That means adding links to your website and or blog, to your LinkedIn and resumes, because the more exposure you have to yourself, the better. So let's take a look, for example, and Google myself and see if I practice what I preach. Just to give you a little background or context while this is loading, I started developing my online presence two years ago, and it's taken a while, but <clears throat> after two years, I have a strong online presence that represents myself as a devoted engineering student with a goal in mind, and that shows consistency, value, and persistence in my career path, which is another plus. So let's see if we can zoom out just so you can see me. So when you Google my name, everything pops up. My Twitter, my LinkedIn, but also professional photos pop up as well. So that's really important. Just a quick question. How did you get yourself like to the top of the search pile there? No, because... Over years of practice. So yeah. what I said, leveraging your social media. I post on everything. Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Google+, anything like that. Um, just keep me up high in the Google search because you're naive to think that when you are applying for a job, your employers are not doing the same thing. And I'll dive a little bit into that when we talk about my opportunities and past experience. Okay, so a couple tips. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click them all up here and then I'm actually going to pull up my LinkedIn just so you can refer back to. So you always want to highlight your skills and achievements, request recommendations from your, uh, your connections, join groups that you can follow like AIAA or SpaceX or Siemens or anything that you're interested in so you're up to date on what's going on in the industry or that specific company. You can also utilize LinkedIn to search, for, I'm sorry, can you go back? Sure. Click happy. <laughs> I think I have to click on the previous one. There we go. And then it's also a fantastic tool for networking. It's amazing. Um, <clears throat> one, of the, one of the greatest things that I love about the LinkedIn platform is if I go to a conference and I didn't have a chance to personally introduce myself to one of the presenters who's speaking on a research topic or something that they're working on, but I really want to get involved. All I have to do is know their name and the company they worked for. And guess what? They say that in every introduction before they start speaking. And I've done this multiple times. Now, a couple things with etiquette, we'll get into that next slide. But as I'm saying this, it's important that you don't just add everybody that you meet or anything like that on LinkedIn. It is a professional network. So what I like to do when there's just someone who is extremely 
dedicated and established in their career and I would like to model my career after, I follow them. So you can follow them just like you do on Facebook without actually sending them a request. So I'm going to pull up my LinkedIn profile real quick so you have a reference tool. Um, LinkedIn is a phenomenal platform. It gives you different options to update your profile. So if you've ever been on it, you can see to the right, it'll say you're at the standard level, basic level, and all the way up to all-star. And all-star means that you're hitting all the key points that, that LinkedIn feels is necessary. So just to add a little context to, um, to my experience with LinkedIn and social media and whatnot, uh, for the past few years before I started at Siemens, I worked at a company where I was in charge of hiring all of the student interns. So I had the opportunity to sort through hundreds of resumes and get to cherry pick what I thought was important or what really stood out to me. Um, and I can tell you one thing for certain is that I always looked at their LinkedIn to see who they were professionally, what they presented their self as to the world. Because a piece of paper is just that. It's everything else that you do in your life, your actions that correlate to who you are and show your commitment to others around. So again, it's always important to have a professional photo. Mine's a little more fun than normal, but that's just because if you don't have a zero gravity photo in the space industry, you're just not established yet. Let's be honest, okay? That's, that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> okay, so my headline now highlights um, two key things. It could just be one, um, something that you're doing at this moment in time. So one of the greatest things that I have going for me right now is my internship at Siemens and then my, uh, my scholar program with NASA. And this goes along, this is just your short bio, the first thing you put on your resume, you can pop it on here. Um, but it's also important to keep in mind that you wanna keep it abstract so it's um, not adhered to a specific industry. That's where you critique on your resume where you wanna go. <clears throat> so I have my website, my own personal website um, that I use to leverage all my social media accounts um, and help me stay connected load. We'll go through um, my past positions and it'll highlight each point, but I see that your bio is in third person. Is that, is that common? Yes. So that's kind of what goes back to what Peter was saying. You don't want to include, I did this or I did that. It's more of a third person type of, mm -hmm. type of viewpoint. There we go. Okay, perfect. So <clears throat> LinkedIn has the ability for you to post articles based on you know anything. I would, what I recommend putting here is key achievements that have helped you stand out from the crowd. So recently I was a finalist in a student astronaut contest. I was in a Discovery Channel documentary. You know, these are the key things that you want to publicize about yourself. So Q and A on Google Plus, um, <clears throat> things like that. And here you'll go through um, my experience. And I took a note from Kaven at this point. What he likes to do under his experience for now, since he is more high level in his career, it's best to keep it vague and go into details on your own personal resume. So what I mean by that is working at Siemens now, I'm sure Kaven's accumulated a lot of proprietary information and uh, has worked on and helped uh, drive advances in some projects, say like Phoenix, for example, you can't really talk about that. So give an overall point-based um, <clears throat> description of your positions, and then you can go in further on your resume. Oops. A great thing here is you can also add technical projects that you've worked on during your time at that specific company. So I have a publication that I posted, and then again, the documentary was at that position. So I linked it in under there. As far as your education, same thing. I think everything else is pretty standpoint. And this is your skills and endorsements. So this is where making connections and having them endorse you is like their own personal recommendation online. So let's get back to the presentation because I'm sure we're almost out of time, but etiquette common sense things that you may not think about, <clears throat> but just to reiterate, don't share anything that you don't want everyone to see. Be open, share your interests, skills, and passions with the world. That was one thing I um, was a little hesitant to do when I was first starting my career is like, oh, well, I don't want to be 
you know, presumptuous and, uh, and say that, you know, I want to be this astronaut, you know, if I didn't mean it. But what I found over the years is that expressing your passion and your skills for something shows us so much of a commitment. And as long as you're fulfilling, making day-to-day -day or week-to-week, semester-by-semester advances in your career and what you're promoting yourself as, then that's okay. And I think it's something to be congratulated as well it's because you're taking initiative of what you want in life. Create a personal website or blog. This is something that I found that a lot of people in my industry at least um, have to talk about either their research or findings. Um, and it's also another great way to, it's just another additive onto your resume. You know, you can put your LinkedIn and your website and they're like, oh, well, what's, what's that? What else are they doing? And that'll help you stand out even more. <clears throat> and then always communicate with your follow and those who follow you. So for me, on my Twitter or my Instagram, I always reply back to every single person who comments because those are the people who are taking an interest in your life and what you're doing. So, a couple of the opportunities that have been presented to me, this is the last slide. Um, I've done so many things in, throughout my career and the majority of them were based solely on the fact that I had this great online social media presence and it was through people that I met online or initiatives that I found online that have gotten me all these great resume builders. <clears throat> So what I'm going to show you now is one of my most recent endeavors in STEM and space advocacy. And I was actually contacted by LinkedIn themselves through my online social media profiles. They found me on Instagram first, and then they went and they found me on LinkedIn. And that's where we first started um, communicating. They noticed that a lot of their users weren't updating their LinkedIn profiles because they didn't feel that there was a need to or was it necessary. So in order to purge that, they made a step-by-step -step video on some of the new features like adding a profile picture, cropping it, changing the filters, because let's be honest, who posts a picture without changing the filter, right? So these are a couple of things. <laughs> these are a couple of things. And then it also shows you how to change your position. So keep that in mind when you're watching the video. But two, it was a great platform. It was a global platform for me to express my advocacy for space exploration because they wanted to um, portray a NASA scientist turned teacher in order to inspire the next generation to explore space. So if you notice, space is kind of a key thing that is coming up in all of their campaigns. So we can go ahead and hit play. And this will show you how to update your profile. resume.com and it goes through and any industry or any career position it'll give you key bullet points that you can include and I highly recommend it for critiquing your resume. Great. Thank you. So we have about 30 So I'm glad I went before her. Really <laughs> 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 